the idea of building a Metro Manila subway, started to materialize on Monday. As President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. led the launching of the tunnel boring machine in Valenzuela City after his father, former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr., conceptualized it several decades ago. The launching of this tunnel boring machine becomes a testament to this administration's commitment to continue the project of the previous administration and more importantly, to build better more infrastructure across the country. With the deployment of the tunnel boring machine, actual construction for Metro Manila subway will commence, as it will set the operation in motion and initiate its movement for excavation. This also signifies the Department of Transportation's point of no return to complete the country's first ever underground railway system. Those who participated in the program included the Embassy of Japan to the Philippines Deputy Chief of Mission, Kenichi Matsuda, JICA Chief Representative Takima Sakamoto, several Senators of the Republic of the Philippines, the Mayor and Congressman of the City of Valenzuela, and some DOTR officials, and representatives from the public and private sectors. The MMSP's Contract Package 101 is part of the seven civil work contracts of the project and involves the construction of three underground stations in Quezon City and an additional semi-underground station in the northernmost part of the Valenzuela City Depot. Six units of tunnel boring machines will be utilized for Contact Package 101 to complete the excavation for the tunnels, and will use a top-down construction method for the construction of the stations. Billed as the Philippines' crown jewel of the mass transit system, the Metro Manila subway will cut across eight cities that will stretch from Valenzuela City to FTI Bekidan in Parañaque City with a spur line to Naya Terminal 3 in Pasay City. With a total of 33-kilometer route length and 17 stations, the country's first underground railway system aims to cut travel time between Quezon City and Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Pasay City from the present 1 hour and 10 minutes to just 35 minutes. Once operational, the railway system can serve up to 519,000 passengers daily. On October 3, two additional stations in Ortigas and Shaw Boulevard broke ground, witnessed by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Japanese Ambassador Koshikawa Kazuhiko, and Transportation Secretary Jamie Bautista. Groundwork started in the first quarter of this year, while the tunneling works of the partial operability section started last June 2022. On June 12, 2022, President Rodrigo Duterte joined Japanese Ambassador to the Philippines Koshikawa Kazuhiko and Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugadi to witness the actual lowering of the tunnel boring machine or TBM which will be used for the tunneling works of the Metro Manila Subway Project Phase 1 at the Valenzuela Depot over the weekend. The lowering of the TBM is such a huge turning point as it set the underground works of the project. Once the TBM is set in motion, it will unveil a new era in the history of the Philippine Railway. Japan takes pride and is honored in contributing to the construction of the Metro Manila subway project, as a major partner of the Philippines government in its bid to provide a more comfortable and convenient life to many Filipinos as possible, through infrastructure development. This significant milestone of tunneling works, for the Metro Manila subway project is set to commence after the lowering and positioning of the first tunnel boring machine at the subway's depot in Valenzuela City for the country's first ever underground railway system. Underground work for the Metro Manila subway project is targeted to be operational by 2027, which can facilitate the drilling of 12 meters of tunnels per day. A total of 25 TBMs, which can dig up to 600 cubic meters of soil, will be used for the project. With its sheer size and power, the subway's TBMs are designed to make the process of tunneling faster, while significantly reducing above-ground disruption during construction, noting that the agency had massive rotating cutting wheels that can break up hard soil and rocks easily.
a total of 25 TBMs, manufactured by JIM Technology Corporation in Surumi, Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan, will be used for the entire subway projects. President Duterte also unveiled the state-of-the-art dynamic full-size train simulator for the Philippine Railways Institute or PRI and an inspection of the subway's depot which is likewise being constructed in Valenzuela. The transport agency also pointed out that should the schedule set for the construction of the Metro Manila subway project be strictly followed, the partial operability of the country's first-ever subway is expected to start in 2025, with its full operation slated in 2027. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugadi earlier quashed doubts on whether the awaited subway project would proceed given the challenges brought about by the pandemic. For one, DOTR assured that the funding for the project was already secured. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is set to fund 76% of the project via a 370.8 billion pesos loan package. The remaining 24% of the project cost, amounting to 117.7 billion pesos, will be paid for by the Philippine government. The subway project will cost the Philippines government up to 488.5 billion or around 10 billion dollars. The Metro Manila subway, dubbed as the project of the century, will stretch across more than 33 kilometers and will reduce travel time between Valenzuela City and Ninoy Aquino International Airport from 1 hour and 10 minutes to just 35 minutes. Japan's assistance, through a variety of ODA support, will provide the Philippines government funds to build this quality infrastructure utilizing Japan's 27,000 km railway experience, and broad knowledge gained through the years. In its first year of full operations, the underground railway system is expected to accommodate up to 370,000 passengers per day, with a capacity of up to 1 million passengers per day over the next decades. Early this year, architectural design was unveiled for several stations of the subway. These are the ground physical layout for stations on North Avenue, Quezon Avenue, East Avenue, Katipuna and Anonis. Also, the sample underground layouts of the selected station were published. This is how a tunnel boring machine works. One of the most popular construction methods used by tunnel boring machines or TBM is EPB. Underground TBM is constantly subject to stanic earth pressure and water pressure. To even outbalance them, the truss jack cylinder applied forward pressure. The earth pressure balances are managed with an earth pressure gauge. The ground is excavated by the cutter head and broken up. Additive injected is softened and adjusted, so it can be more easily convey pressure to the earth pressure gauge. Pressure bounce is maintained while excavating, and soil is evacuated using the screw conveyor. TBMs thereby bounces static earth and water pressure to smoothly and stably performed excavation. TBMs, such as EPB machine, are composed of a shield body that perform tunnel excavation, and a backup system, which carry the equipment necessary for the excavation. The cutter head rotates, excavating the soil in front of the TBM. The cutter head is equipped with this cutter, and scraper bit. This can be replaced when it became worn out. The bearing is rotated by the cutter motors turning the cutter head at the front of the TBM. Thrust jack cylinders are extended to push some form segments, and the counter forces push the TBMs forwards. The TBM is equipped with an articulation jack system for negotiating sharp curves, the cutter's head is composed of a front and rear shield, and articulation enables them to excavate these curves. 
The erector holds each segment to reach strokes, assembling these segments in ranges. The erector places each segment and place individually, and then places the key segment, completing the ring. The TBM uses a symmetric straggler joint construction. The embedded pumps in the back of cars pump a liquid and B liquid to the grouting units mounted in the machine. Two grouting units for grouts between segments and the skid plates. While the TBM performs excavation. These prevent subsidence and water leakage from between segments, and as well as rapidly stabilize the segments. The additive pumps in the back of the car pump foams and polymer to the cutter head. The additive is injected by the cutter head, while machine excavation is in progress, solidifying the mud. The screw conveyor excavated soil to the rear of the TBM. The soil is passed through a rubber hose, to the backup of the conveyor and tunnel conveyor to the final conveyor, in that order, and carry to the rear of the tunnel. The use of tunnel conveyors is far more efficient than excavations, by Mack cars. The rolling stocks supply new segments. The strolling stock is made of locomotives, two segment cars, and a platform. A crane picks up individual segment brought in from the backup and load them one by one to the erector. 